practically this generation is more liberal, more tolerant, more Democrat-leaning than the one before. It's not just because they're young. For another point of view, it's hard news with Russell Brown and Wemmer on Kiwi. From publicaddress.net and the Media 7 Show on TVNZ7, Russell Brown joins us this morning. Good morning to you, Russell. Good morning. And uh, it's January, almost the end of January. Traditionally, it's um, a pretty crazy month for um, serious crime. Yes. Um, now, there was some scientific study, that wasn't there, done a few years ago that said that um, in, the, in the hotter months, uh, that kind of crime, murders, that side of, sort of thing, actually increases. Yeah, yeah, there, there are a bunch of reasons that, um, that we tend to kill each other more in, uh, in the summer months than, than the others, um, including that uh, in New Zealand anyway, in this part of the world, that it's also Christmas time, uh, so families get together, um, yeah. which is uh, often occasion for family violence, sadly. Um, and I actually wrote a blog post about this yesterday because um, I think most people have probably forgotten that um, January two years ago, uh, there were uh, ten homicides, and um, you would think that that the country was, you know, was tipping into the abyss. Yeah. Frankly, uh, and there was all kinds of panic about, um, uh, you know, where we were going and what was going on, and it was it was actually quite difficult to uh, try and point out to people that this was completely in line with historical trends. Yes. And some some years it was a wee bit more, some years a wee bit less, but it was in no way was it out of line with long term trends. Uh, and of course. Um, the police minister at the time, Annette King, uh, copped all sorts of flack uh, for, um, as part of a fairly sensible statement, which she tried to uh, point this out, uh, mentioned the sun and the moon uh, as potential influences. And she actually said, you know, uh, I think it was the officer, you know, what, she named the police officer who um, had said that to her. Mm. Uh, so she was really just passing on the comments of a police officer, but... Um, it didn't go down that well. It sounded crazy. Oh, it sounded crazy, but there were, but and it, it was unfortunate. But there was an element of truth. To exactly. It. There, right. was, there was a, there was a fairly strong element of truth. Uh, Superintendent Shortland was the one she she um, quoted. And whilst there's no scientific evidence that uh, people go crazy on the full moon, yeah, there's certainly a lot of statistical evidence uh, to show that um, we do go a bit crazy in the summer months, yeah. especially around Christmas. Uh, and it's actually not just homicides either. Uh, we managed to die uh, in any number of ways at a heightened rate through summer, just because we're getting out and doing things, basically. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but we had, uh, since Christmas week, I did a wee count, and there's been um, eight homicides. And yet we haven't had this kind of, oh, my God, you know, it's all going to hell in the handcart um, uh, narrative. And in part, that's because uh, the deaths that there have been have been family violence, and that just never grabs the headlines as much as uh, stranger violence, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and there just hasn't been a media crusade this no, time No, no, exactly. The, 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 the it, it's like the, that narrative doesn't work with the current government yeah. uh, for whatever reason. And to some extent, they've probably inoculated themselves with uh, whether it's going to work or not, and I don't think it will, but with the three strikes thing. I think it's a meaningless gimmick, but um, but were they to be held up, uh, you know, and called to account for you know for the murder rate or something like that, which yeah. is it's probably worth pointing out, dropping steadily over time. Uh, you know, were they to be held up to account for that, they'd say, oh, we're doing three strikes. And if you read um, Judith Collins' vile uh, column in the New Zealand Herald today, you can see that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah. It's a dreadful column. Yeah. It's, it, it, there's, there's a phrase called shroud waving, which is um, uh, shroud waving is exploiting um, bad news or a terrible event for political ease. Right. And that's exactly what Judith Collins is doing in the New Zealand Herald this morning. Okay. Well, let's let's now look at um, let's leave all that behind. Let's look, yeah, on a happier note. Yeah, yeah, on a happier note. Let's look at cool stuff that's that's happening this week. Yeah. Um, first of all, Apple has a has a big announcement, and there's a lot of media hype about this. Um, and it's the the internet's are going a little bit crazy at the moment, and and for um, for fear of adding kind of adding to it, what do you think Steve Jobs is going to announce this week? Uh, it's pretty clear now, and it has been for maybe about six weeks that uh, he's going to announce a tablet computing device that will probably not look like uh, anything uh, else, in, anything that anyone else has done so far, uh, and it will have uh, quite a comprehensive 
multi-touch interface. If you've ever played with an iPhone, it will be like uh, an iPhone on steroids. Okay. Uh, there will be uh, new commands, and it, it, I, I actually think this is going to be a pretty new product. I, I, I think it's going to be really different, and the the buzz from Steve Jobs himself, yeah. no doubt, you know, uh, released by Apple, uh, is that um, this is the most important thing he's ever done in his career. But see, well, that's huge because, I mean, the, the, the iPhone, the iPod, yep. um, uh, the, you know, way, way back into the old, the old Apple Macintoshes, they were all very, very important. Yeah, yeah. And, um, he, and he stakes his reputation on these, on these gadgets. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And um, Jobs is probably the, you know, one of the people I respect most in the world. Um, whilst being under no illusions, I, I think he's probably a bloody nightmare to work with. Mm. Uh, and he is, he's kind of crazy. Um, but he is someone who has brought a, an exacting standard to a, a field where um, there are a lot of people who, you know, who think that good enough is good enough. Yeah. But, and but sometimes it doesn't work. I mean, the, the, the story of Apple is extraordinary. The fact that, that that he they came up with the Apple II, which was a was a revolutionary home computer, then the Mac, and then a year after the the first Mac hit the market, mm. uh, he was thrown out of his own company by his own board because yeah. he was an unmanageable stoner, yeah, that's right. which was extraordinary. Yeah. And then he came back uh, in the late nineties and um, um, laid waste to the board members who'd gotten rid of him, at, saved Apple, and then changed the world. Yeah. But in, in, uh, getting back to this gadget that's, that's going to be released mm, this yeah. week, in, in order for this to be his greatest gadget, you know, it would have to be a game changer, and it would yeah. have to be something that that um, almost all of us, you know, because most of us have an iPod or, or or an iPhone or something along those lines, some some something kind of you know something Apple. Yeah. Um, it would have to be something like that that we could all have. Yeah. Well, that um, the, there's a buzz that, that indeed it is something that we can all have. Uh, and that it will be a family device. It will be a household device that maybe will use its camera to do facial recognition. So huh. you can have, um, you know, a family of four, and whoever happens to pick up uh, the iPad, which I, I think is what it's going to be, uh, looking at sort of movements and uh, intellectual property and, and trademarks, and that yeah. sort of thing, looks like it's going to be the iPad. Right. But even anyone who picks it up, it does what they want it to do. Uh, and that might include things like reading your weekly magazine or your daily paper yeah. or your novel. Um, those, the printed word industry is sweeping on this like you wouldn't believe. Yeah. Um, Apple has been in talks, uh, last year was in talks with the Australian newspaper publishers, who of course are our newspaper publishers, about this device. Because it's digital media that's not on the internet, because, you know, I think we all know that the internet works best when it's free. Uh, but if you have this other platform, uh, which is a bit like a mobile phone, a bit like the internet, and you can start attaching some sort of fee to it, yeah. then, boy, that's important for those people. So th there's a lot of other industries riding on this thing. Mm. Okay. Another um, cool uh, announcement this week was from Air New Zealand uh, with their new uh, seating plans yeah. on long-haul flights. Uh, what do you make of the sky couch where you can uh, snuggle with your beloved? Yeah, well, um, it, clearly, uh, economically, it works best if, um, if there's a couple of you um, because it's uh, the cost of two economy seats and then some. Mm. But it is a great idea, um, and I can see it being really appealing. Uh, and the fact, fact that it's designed so that you can snuggle down without... Uh, messing up the, the people behind you, because that's one of the most irritating things on long-haul flights is that you end up getting trapped in because people have got their seats so far yeah. back. Yeah. Uh, so there's, you know, you, you're lying the other way. Um, I, I think it's a really smart move, actually, and it's got, got the little iPod dock. and um, Yeah, well done in New Zealand, actually. I, I think the yeah, New Zealand um, have actually... I, I I think they're anticipating consumer needs quite well. They're certainly mm. doing quite well on the internet as well. So mm. yes, they, yes, they are in their in their marketing campaigns as well. Um, Actually, the, I, I don't know whether you saw Simon Grigg um, uh, in his blog had had some poor experiences that, with Air New Zealand and mentioned uh, in one tweet and in a blog comment that he was coming back to New Zealand because he's been living in Asia. Yeah, the legendary rock and roll manager, label owner guy, and. Um, in New Zealand spotted it. 
and Responded. he sat down with sat down with his wife, thinking, "Oh, well, we'll see how any New Zealand goes." You know, haven't flown it for a while. It wasn't good last time, and they were treated really well. And then brought um, glasses of champagne down <laughs> for his class, <laughs> and eventually he discovered that's because they'd seen him coming. There you go. So that's pretty smart. Yes. They were reading the blogs, and they thought, "No, oh, we know what flight you're coming on." We will give you a special greeting. It's almost like reading the mind. Yeah, of, yeah, of, of, exactly. Of, of your customer. Yeah, so he, he was, uh, he's just written about that. He was hugely impressed. Wow. Great story. Hey, thanks, Russell. Okay, cheers, mate. Cheers. Mate. Russell Brown at uh, publicaddress.net, the Media 7 show on TVNZ7 as well.